Greetings and welcome back. Michael and I are joined again here today to do a session on Science is the New Religion on this Saturday, July 3rd, 2021, our second session of the day. And this is a study where we reflect Bible principles and match them against the deeds of the day, which is the science script that Michael has labored to put together for us. And look, we're on Babylon part three, session 15, Michael. Oh, 16. Oh, pardon me, I had a read. Sorry, I haven't uh, changed the number. It's session 16, it must be uh, Babylon part three. Yeah, last time we were into Babylonian science and we spoke about uh, that uh, if Babylon was nothing else than uh, another uh, captivity from the Israelites and Rome is the new Babylon, then uh, the Babylonian science is nothing than, uh, yeah, compared to the Roman science, it is just quite interesting that the science in the old times was a pagan science and in all pagan religions they also look at the skies and to figure out uh, how the origin of the universe uh, was uh, was so and how it, what everything was created and uh, what the origin of life is especially and in Babylonian you got uh, three sources of or three branches of uh, science actually it is uh, math, math, astronomy and astrology. So in Babylonia there were three major branches of science that was math, astronomy and astrology. Today, the Babylonians are perhaps best known for their astronomical observations, but astronomy and astrology played a subordinate role in mathematics, mathematics for quite some time in Babylonian history. It was not until the end of the Kassite dynasty when astronomy began to become the most important Babylonian science, ah, which continued into the first millennium BC during the Neo-Babylonian dynasty. It was then that Babylonian astronomers began mapping out constellations, dividing 36 into three circles represented by the gods Anu, Elil and Ea. I don't think that many Bible uh, scholars are being uh, known that actually this was being taught in Babylon. Also, when, uh, yeah, Daniel and all these people were in captivity there. Isn't that interesting? Split into three of 12 each. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is the source, Wolfram von Soden, The Ancient Orient, an introduction to the study of the ancient Near East yeah? from 1994. Even more than mathematics, Babylonian astronomy represented the melding of science and religion. Oh, there we go again, Michael. There we go again. We had this in our last session. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it will not be separate uh, from now until the end of the series. It is everywhere it is connected because you see that the church has the most influence and the church uh, runs the most universities today and the church has the most money. Oh boy, this is sounding more like politics all of a sudden. Why is that, Michael? It's just to distract the people from the word of God. Ah, because if you hey, don't know the word a of good point, if you don't don't know the word of God, you don't question the authorities. You think that oh, it is just a government by by the people, and you see that you you don't see the picture as ah, it is. I think Michael, what you're trying to say is if you don't study the Bible, if you don't read and study the Bible, you don't know the Bible then the state is free to use the Bible against your knowledge as a pagan in order to cultivate your inactivity with the, of course, religion of this uh, empire, which is the beast. The beast will rule over you. It's ruling over the state. It's the beast, so it takes and cultivates any knowledge of the truth and uh, is free to uh, to use you for its own purpose. 
Oh, not only that, Brad, you see that the state system schools the people into their history. So if you don't know the real history, you are simply lost because you think that uh, yeah, that is all for, for your best, for the best purpose. It is not to hide anything. They're just leaving out the major things. People oh, that reminds me, Michael, something very important. You know, the times we live in, um, I was listening to one of the most recent uh, sessions that Tom and Yerk did on uh, Joggler 66 earlier this week, and Yerk had mentioned that he was typing in the word inquisition into the tags in YouTube. So if mm -hmm. any of you have a YouTube uh, page, you know that you can assert tags into your videos and they will be applied in the search engine. Well, the word inquisition is no longer of use to Google. So it is one of these terms that has been blacklisted. They blacklisted the inquisition, of course. I mean, <laughs> That Tony Fauci isn't a Jesuit for nothing now, is he? Yeah, what to say about it? You see, the the real thing is that they were doing the, this from since the beginning that information will be suppressed and that people who are too superficial to look behind it and to study it, you see that Brad and me and all the other guys, we are doing it for years. We are not going into a site search engine um, just oh, on a regular Mike, day. And, I'm going to send you an image, Michael, here quick. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just want you to pull this image up mm -hmm. when when you get a chance. But yeah, Michael, continue. I'm yeah, that, that's the point. You see that you don't get it uh, on on a, on a uh, Sunday afternoon. Uh, type in something on Google and you get the truth. Okay, <laughs> Brett's, Brett's uh, indignation of politics here. Um, I just want to show everyone that, you know, this is what we're dealing with here. This is the beast. This is the beast. This happened a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Tony Fauci was recognized as a very important individual to bring about a very important agenda in these days. And he is going to be rewarded greatly because they have succeeded in putting forward the whole agenda. So we continue. We continue into our study of why we have this hierarchy making its way. It's very interesting, that metal, isn't it, Michael? Mm -hmm. The pentagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, what do they call it? The Medal of Freedom or something like that? in the United States. But um, yeah, Michael, it's just, you know, uh, this has been going on for so long. This year is, uh, you know, uh, 2021. So this will be the 20th anniversary we're coming up of the World Trade Center attacks in New York City. Mm -hmm, yeah. A very pivotal time in history. I <laughs> How shall people react to the current situation <laughs> if they yeah, are absolutely unaware what happened 20 years ago? Dismay, yeah. That's my yeah. that's my that's my point. You see that they are totally uh, overpowered by the current situation because they were very careless 20 years ago and uh, 40 years ago, 100 years ago. You see, people are just too entertained to to make a deep research. Yeah, you see entertainment everywhere. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. Yeah, you know, that that that's the, the the real problem. Entertainment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Cigarettes in the city. Oh, don't we know that from you? <laughs> so the planets were all associated with different deities. Is it? Uh, 
is that uh, a similarity or is it just far-fetched that uh, the names of the planets did not uh, change since more than 2000 years? <laughs> uh, yeah, people really think they live in a modern age when they are using old uh, Roman names and Latin language. Boy, it's a, like a bottomless pit. What else it's is associated pit. with different deities? Hmm? Yeah, but you see that it's everywhere. The planets are all associated with yes. different deities and cigarettes in the city and throughout all of Mesopotamia, for that matter, served not only as temples, but also at scribal schools and celestial observatories. There you got it again. Temple, school, scribal mm -hmm. schools, temples, celestial observatories. You see, this is a connection between um, education and religion or science and religion you have to you have to see it as it is as long as as if the state is schooling a civilian about the things that he ought to know because otherwise he won't get good grades nothing will change people actually would have to refer on the private teachers independent uh, teachers but it is not been uh, accommodated and not allowed uh, in, in, in the many countries around the world that people ha are being uh, taught by independent teachers. They have all are bound to the school system, to the education system. Therefore, they get all the same education or in other terms, the world core curriculum. And therefore, uh, they are so overpowered with users information. Uh, otherwise, they don't, uh, if they don't know it from memory, they are being programmed to use that. Uh, otherwise, they don't get good grades. They cannot go to the university. They won't get a profession. And so that's it. And in their spare time, they say that, oh, no, listening to Jörg and Tom and Brad and Michael and who else? Uh, oh, I don't know. Have don't have any time for it. I would like to have some entertainment. I would like to see football. I would like to see Formula One. I would like to hang out, go to go to the music pubs or something like that. I can't I can't blame them for that. You see that because but uh, it's he will, hedonism, will say, Michael, hedonism. Our, yeah, our but world is say, just polluted by this stuff. Yeah, but professing to be wise, they became fools. You see that they think they are wise, but actually they're being fooled by by yeah by education authorities and uh, by their superficial uh, research. They're do not doing it on their own, uh, and it is becoming harder to make uh, research on their own. And even in the years when internet was a bit a bit more more free than than today. People had enough uh, chance to study things, but uh, on, you see that they go into superficial things because they don't have to 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 think about it, and that's that will not never change. And we will not never change the world. Um, there are so few people who are actually uh, keen on not keen on real knowledge and studying for the, for themselves and studying the Bible and comparing all the things. Um, the 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 big majority of people is, is not interested in it and uh, even will counterattack on that because uh, it 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 will distract him from their life just having fun. Yeah, you 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 scare the peep 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 out of people if you aren't, go on and telling them the truth. They yeah, reject that's it. That's right. Because, it's it goes like this. Have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was in Galatians, I think, even. Yeah. We, mm -hmm. we, we covered that last time, you know. And, and I think it's really important we know the origins of this. It is Babylon, Michael. Very clearly is Babylon in the Bible. And, you know, uh, more of a modern definition of Babylon is any city or any center of luxury and wickedness. Yeah. It's everywhere. If Babylon is everywhere. You can't escape Babylon. You might run from that center, the epicenter, but it still has its influence everywhere. Yeah. Okay, once the astronomers made their good obs made their observations, they were able to develop calendars and make predictions for the good of the state. <coughs> Again, everything has been made for the good of the state so that the state uh, stays intact. Oh, don't worry the people, don't tell them anything you know. Yeah. The Babylonians were able to create calendars that were more accurate than those produced by their contem contemporaries because their calendrical observations were aided by advances in astronomy and math. Okay, astronomy and math, which helped to iron out potential problems. 
For instance, the fact that connections between the day, month and year could be expressed in whole numbers was rectified by the Babylonians through their observations of the stars and use of math. They created a loony solar calendar that was very adaptable and adding an extra month if needed to equalize the solar and lunar years. <clears throat> the astronomical observations the Babylonians made were later discovered by Jewish and Greek scholars who used the knowledge to predict eclipses. The second century AD, Alexandrian scientist Ptolemy and even the 6th century before Christ Greek philosopher and scientist Thales are believed to have accurately predicted eclipses based on Babylonian celestial observations. The Greeks indeed were impressed with Babylonian astronomy, especially during the Hellenistic period when the Greek Seleucids, Seleucids controlled Babylon and were able to translate many of the cuneiform Akkadian tables into Greek. But the Greeks were most interested in the Babylonian science that is not considered so today, which is astrology. It is important to remember that all forms of science were used for the king and the state in ancient Babylon, which are also included astrology. Aha, you see, science and state are mingled together as well. And if church and state or religion and science is mingled together, then you got church, state and science mingled together. For the Babylonians, astrology consists of making temporary predictions and decisions based on the movements of the celestial bodies. After observing the planets and stars, Babylonian scientists would suggest to the king such things as when and where to plant crops, when to pursue diplomacy and when to go to war. Huh? Isn't that something? Huh? Reminds me of that uh, famous uh, astrologer um, of, uh, of Ronald Reagan. Huh? For example, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. <laughs> yeah. Or rather, Nancy Reagan. Mike. Yeah, or rather Nancy Reagan. Yeah. To yeah. be to be yeah. specific, we, yeah. We handled that issue. I think it was in in uh, Christopher Lee somewhere. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, that could be. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty be, sure yeah. we did. I yeah, forget did. which yeah. script it was, but you would know better than I. That's for yeah. sure. Unlike today, astrology was never used for personal decisions unless it had to do with the king and was viewed as part of astronomy, not separate from it. Yeah, and that's the thing. Astrology was used for the state. So the look at the stars was used for the purpose, for the good of the state, not for the good of man. <laughs> so conclusion. There is a common misconception among many people in the modern world that scientific thought began with the ancient Greeks, but an examination reveals that true science was being practiced centuries earlier in the Mesopotamian city of Babylon, albeit with some fundamental differences. You see, all roads lead to Babylon. So that many people refer to all oh, the Greeks that were so great, they had philosophers and they had all the great mathematicians. And, and even so, uh, thousands of years before in Babylon, they did uh, nearly the same. And they invented, invented things. And they had their own deities like Marduk. Mm -hmm. Finally, science and religion were tightly intertwined in ancient Babylon. Astronomical observations were made by priests in religious temples. Yeah? It won't get better than that, Brad. Now you know why the Vatican has an absor ab observatory, huh? To make predictions for the king and state which were sanctioned by the Mesopotamian deities. Yeah, it's the same here. Astronomical observations were made by priests in the religious temples. So they were worshipping sun gods. Mm -hmm. Sun gods. Quite sure. This is a so-called horoscope. This is a birth chart. There are no planets except the Mars here. Um, so you see that uh, at the time of your birth or of, of the birth of something, for example, and the birth of a state, something, uh, what the sky looked like. Huh? Ah, Michael, this is reminding me of something rather quickly all of a sudden. You know, at the beginning we mentioned there were 36 mm -hmm. uh, associated with the 12 quote unquote mm -hmm. gods. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you have three gods and divided by 12 is what I'm trying to say. So Babylonian Trinity, anyone? 
Oh, it goes even far more further than that. We have oh, to I'm spend sure at, it least, does, at least at least two sessions about that. I know what you are up to, but uh, just uh, trust me. I hope I know what I'm doing. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> I hope so too. You see, this is a is is a, is a birth horoscope. If it were so, you would see many many more uh, lines and etc. in it. This is actually the side you have at the at the horizon. That is the line between uh, west and uh, east and west. Yeah, and uh, you see this is divided in twelve sections. Uh, these are the twelve so-called houses <clears throat> where the gods live. Yeah, because this is a, the the symbol of Mars. Mars is the god of war and of male sexuality yeah and so he uh, this are this is the zodiac yeah and before i will go into that astrological explanation what it has all to do uh, simply just uh, think about that this is some kind of ancient science yeah it is not not more or less ancient science uh, deriving out of the area of mesopotamia from the Chaldeans, for example. And uh, when we know that on Chaldeans, which we in last session we have uh, developed that Chaldeans means somebody of, of that region and also an astrologer, if you uh, remember that. You see that here it, it was in Genesis 11. I know that from memory. I think it was 1128 or somewhere. Yeah, Ur of the Chaldeas. Yeah, what do you read there? Yeah, you read there. Implication al Chaldean, as if so descended, also an astrologer, as if proverbial of that people. You see that the Chaldeans were actually very famous for using astrology. It, 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 it is depicted here in Hebrew 3778, Ur of the Chaldeans. Let me remind you, 3000 BC, more than 5000 years ago. Yeah, and uh, this zodiac here, um, I will explain uh, a little bit later because I see now that in the script I, I have uh, have implemented uh, another way. You see that science actually means knowledge and a systematic enterprise that builds and organizes knowledge in the form of testable explanations and predictions about the universe. Oh. oh. What's that? The predictions about the universe. Hasn't that something to do with astrology? Maybe astronomy, astrology, predictions about the universe. There you got it again, that it has something to do to have knowledge about the universe. So uh, uh, Michael, everything is fitting together. Mm, you have prophecy in the Bible. Then you have predictions about the universe and the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. This is their form of prophecy. Yeah. Yeah. I will explain what's it all about. This is, a, if you like to say so, it has been named after certain um, star signs and it has been named uh, about uh, Roman gods. Yeah, for example, the sun, which would be in, in uh, which would in the Greek would be Apollo. Yeah, and um, then you have uh, Mars in uh, in in uh, Greek. It would be Aries in uh, Roman. It would be Mars. Then Jupiter, which would be equivalent in Greece, would be v, uh, would be Zeus, etc., etc., etc. Neptune, Poseidon, etc., etc. So you see, it has been equipped here with uh, the symbols of planets, and the name of the planets are simply names of. Uh, deities yeah where they don't exist yeah but you see that all serves a pagan context okay and as brett asked about oh there were three by twelve yeah there are twelve areas of interest yeah for example area five is uh, is uh, children area seven is uh, thinking um, area 10 is your social status, etc., etc. Um, you see, you have some uh, diversions. Uh, how is this in English? Um, divisions? Divisions, yeah. Thank you. Divisions, yeah. Um, this is a circle and it consists of 360 degrees. Okay. So you see here every degree 
and every degree means a day. So the sun is traveling every one degree every day. And 360 is nothing more or nothing less than uh, 36 by 10. Ha, huh, interesting. And, 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 and you got here three so-called decils, yeah, three by 10. 10, 20, 30, 10, 20, 30. So this is the whole scale of an entire year, which was then in ancient times 360 days, okay? That's why they also included some months to get it then, then uh, correct again. So that are these, these are the solar days. Okay, and now we know that the sun does not need uh, one, uh, one degree each day, but uh, 59 minutes. Of a, of a degree. So 59, around 59 uh, out of 60. So that's what why they get along with 365 days. But nevertheless, we got here uh, three, a division of, of three major parts. These are called the desults, or in ancient times, they also been called the deacons. Yeah, because DEC, where our month December comes from, yeah, means the tens. So a decimal system means by 10, okay? So usually December is the, is the 10th month of it. So not the 12th, because the year started in March early on, yeah? And not in, in January, but that's, uh, that's uh, for the change of the Julian to the Gregorian calendar in the, the Middle Ages or in the Dark Ages, okay? So these divisions here, you see, these are divisions by 10, okay? So each fragment here is 30 degrees. 12 by 30 means 360, means the entire circle around the, the circle of the year or the circle of the sun. Because it is more interesting, I show you a complete radix where you see there are many, many more things. Yeah, okay. So look at that. Yeah. So this would be a complete radix. You have you have here all the planets, the moon, the the Mars, the Jupiter, the Jupiter, the Mercury, the Venus, the Sun, the Pluto, the Neptune, the Saturn. And is this uh, what's called houses, Michael? Yeah. This the the, the, the twelve uh, the divided through twelve. Yeah. These are the houses: first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. They stand for a for a purpose here, so that in the first house you got your your ego, yeah. So that that what you want to achieve, yeah. So what what drives you in life? The second one is your possession. The third one is your communication. The fourth one is your family or in your home. The fifth one are your children and your sex life. The sixth one is your adaptation to life and 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 uh, sometimes also your health. The seventh are your partnerships, your thinking. The eighth one is the possession of others or your your dogmas. The ninth one is your uh, relation to uh, to religion. Uh, the tenth one is your social status. The eleventh one is what you achieve in in your profession and how the society is is, is uh, how you make it into the society. And the twelfth one is how you appear in the society. Yeah. So so if we if we know that in the original horoscope there are deities. Yeah. These are gods. These are rulers here. These are deities. Yeah. This is the 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 main deity of the Roman Empire, the Jupiter. He's already in use. At the, as the planet and in the horoscope, yeah? Or uh, the Pluto, which would be the Hades, the, the ruler of the underworld, or the sun, which is uh, in, in pagan religions, the, the life giver, of course. Now that without the sun, not, nothing would, uh, would work out on, on this earth, yeah? Venus, which be which be in the goddess of sexuality. Mercury, which would which would be in Greek the Hermes, which would be the uh, the messenger of the god, so that he is handing over information. So Mercury stands for information in that horoscope. So actually, everything is about uh, to be built around pagan deities here. And the zodiac around it that just means the. Um, division of the 360 degrees in 12 yards and they're just been named after the name of stars uh, constellations yeah so like uh, leo and cancer gemini taurus aries pisces aquarius 
etc., 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 etc. This is not what does appear on the sky. These are just names. You could also name then uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is so much confusion around, and it's very hard for me to describe, even as I am a very studied astrologer in, in my former life. I have, I have studied that in, in Germany. Yeah, I'm glad you say that, Michael, because, you know, when we come to the knowledge of God's truth, it completely transforms all of this, doesn't it, Michael? Yeah, sure, but you see that uh, people are using that without their, without r recognizing that we of are course. still worshiping this pagan goddess, even by naming the, this sign or this planet Jupiter. Yeah, you have to really realize that you just fall into the the pagan worship again by using that. I'm not saying that it has no 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 meaning, but the meaning is hidden actually. Uh, astrologers, they are having the, the, the same problem, professing to be wise, they became fools. Exactly, Michael. And this is the thing, this this uh, <clears throat> this represents corruption on a very high level. And yeah, it's not easy to come to these conclusions, Michael. But the fact of the matter is uh, people rely on some form of truth whether that be divining from the spirits or divining from christ himself that is mm -hmm. god through through christ mm -hmm. to god the father in the sure, Bible. they take the glory away that's a purpose of course that's they, the problem they, yes that's, a, that's a major major problem well it might not be a problem to some who haven't really figured this out yet but uh you know, just it's really tough, Michael, because most people in this world do not want to conform to the Bible because they know they're sinners. They're they're ashamed of their sin. They can't forgive themselves for God's sakes. I have pity on these people. Mm -hmm. But at some point you have to, well... God will re reveal it to you when you're ready. Let's put it that way. If you're living in a drunken stupor and you're not sober, you're not going to be able to handle this. This is not the video series for you. Oh, this is very elaborate. Uh, you see that the, the, the problem is you have to really have your uh, your, your Bibles, your Bible in your mind and, and, and to be real straight to go into these matters. This is not for the beginners. This is absolutely not for the beginners. You see that I will miss out so many informations because you see that uh, I, I think that it's 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 it's, uh, it's it's common knowledge. Yeah, you see that I really apologize, but because there are so many things which I will miss out and forget because to me it's just common knowledge. And people who start with it, they are totally overpowered by all this information. This is the zodiac. These are the rulers. These are the things. Mm -hmm. This is Babylonian. That's this right. is Roman. Ugh. That's right. There are rules. There are rules and regulations that this principle works upon. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, um, we're right back to the Pantheon, aren't we, Michael? Yeah, sure. The Pantheon, the, 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 the temple of the pagan goddess. Yeah. Actually, I could I could go on and on and on, but uh, sure. you, you remember that when we were doing the Christopher Lee series, when we spoke about the end of Dracula, the first original picture, then Dracula was being uh, put down uh, to, to 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 dust by the use of a of a cross, yeah. And he was dying uh, in the midst of a magic circle. And in that magic circle, uh, there were also the signs of, of the zodiac. So there were also the signs of, of, uh, of Libra and uh, uh, Aquarius, etc. You see that you can also see that at a form of a, ma of a, of a um, magic circle. This is, in fact, a magic circle. This is sorcery. You know, this is thinking to be as wise as God or as wise as serpents and uh, professing to be wise to predict the future uh, by the constellation of stars and uh, planets. That's nothing else. This is Babylonian science, so-called science, science so-called. Okay. I really, I really can remember when it, when it came down to, um, to uh, uh, Christopher Lee that we used uh, that uh, that image. I really can remember. 
I don't know if you can remember Brett or if somebody out there has that uh, great memory, but uh, I know that it was uh, in there somewhere, Christopher Lee. But uh, you see, you can you can not uh, you cannot imagine how many hours of of study I need to do these uh, these sessions. These are such uh, you, you need so much information, and this, this is relied to that, and uh, this is coming from this. And uh, so that uh, I'm pardoning that uh, this is just about uh, the all the images uh, which I had to use for uh, Christopher Lee and uh, and uh, somewhere else. And so that uh, the end of Dracula, I don't know if I can find it uh, on that face. I, I as usual, I cannot find it that. Uh, yeah, Michael, you know, that's that's kind of the thing, you know, the weight of all of this uh, is is very true today. Uh, we have a lot of weight on our shoulders because, uh, you know, right here it says the first pantheon, the first pantheon of the quote unquote gods was built in 27 ah, BC. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that is where where Dracula died. You see, this is nothing more than uh, than the zodiac. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right. Cancer, Cancer, Gemini, Taurus. Yeah, and with this a Freemasonic uh, checkerboard. Uh, yeah, white. Yeah, yeah checkerboard yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. layout. Yeah, this is, you see, this is uh, this is where, where Dracula died. Yeah, mm -hmm. you see it. You see it now here in the background. You see. Yeah, these are all the signs of the zodiac, and so you see that every session uh, builds upon the older sessions. Yeah, nothing happens by accident here. Yeah, you see the sun in this in the middle, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so so I'm I'm glad I found that. So let let let's move on. Um, you see we. Uh, Brett correctly referred to that uh, 36 uh, areas divided into three circles represented by the god Enu, Elil, and Ea. We, we are talking about Babylon. We are not talking about Rome at the moment, okay? So 36 constellation. 36 means uh, 12 by 3. So these are the 12 houses. And in each house, there are three segments. And the segments, because they are divided by E, of course, um, they are uh, 30 divided by, by 3 means 10. So these are called in the ancient religion of astrology, a deacon. Mm -hmm. A deacon in etymology online means one who reads the gospel in divine worship, one of a body of assistant to a priest and other clergymen from old English deacon from Latin diaconus, a servant of the church, religious official, and once again oh, you see boy. you see there the relation, <laughs> you see the relation once again from pagan uh, images, idols, so called science uh, to religion. What would you expect when we talked about gods uh, being displayed in a horoscope? And even in the Bible, uh, it speaks of bishops and deacons. What yeah. kind of gospel are we speaking of here, Michael? <laughs> What yeah. kind of gospel? We should all think about that. Reading the gospel, but they didn't say which gospel now, did they? Did they specify that? If this is a Latin? No, term? no, of, of course, of course not. Yeah, of course not. You see that? that well, was see, just... they, that's, that's how it all works. They want to convince you that it's Christian and good to be a pagan. Yeah. No, that doesn't work. Sorry. Yeah. You see here specifically as Christian teacher and pastor, technically a deacon or deaconess, deaconess, interesting, huh? Deaconess, a female priest, interesting. What does the Bible oh, speak? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this only this only will appear and you will recognize this if you know the Bible. Otherwise, you won't say oh deacon or deaconess. Okay, that's a female part. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so it is a deacon is a minister or a servant or a priest. Okay, so it is a little bit less than a priest, but actually it's a deacon. Yeah? In many parts of the scripture. Yeah? So in deacon means in strong Greek uh, 1250, it means a servant or a waiting man. Huh? A servant. 
Yeah? What we all should be a servant. So until here, I would I would not say that is some something of of uh, it's just a servant. Yeah, we are all our servants of God. Yeah, but actually, a Christian teacher and pastor. Oh, that is is it's, it's specifically this is specifically is something which is uh, is, uh, is is teaching something. Uh, deacon or deaconess. Uh, uh, pardon me, but <laughs> you see. Oh, it, for sure. In 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 real Christian uh, belief, there could be no deaconess. Okay. Okay, so these are the deacons. And you see that astrology also use the deacons. Yeah, see, this is this is a a problem with our modern times, Michael, <clears throat> is that the subjects of uh, you know how Christ has described us has been uh, completely hidden and put away because you know we're we are dealing with such a deep indoctrination i mean just look at the 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 quote unquote term quote unquote human you know mm -hmm. uh that right there is the day and age and the struggles that we are gonna have to deal with in order to regain our simplicity in Christ again. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. This is what we're wrestling with. And uh, yeah, my Christian churches, look at that. Yeah, Michael, um, big, big, big problems. And um, it's mixing, all in, in what you take on, yes. Mixing the holy and the profane. You see, they're, they're taking over the things to other systems, and it means in that system it means this, in another system it means another thing. But just to, to use use the word, and everybody knows, oh, he's a deacon. Yes, yeah, dense in the Bible. Yeah, but in another context, you see that they don't they don't really see the difference. Yeah, they don't really see the difference. You see that the deacon... If you look it up in, 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 a, in a dictionary, it means this ambiguation may refer to deacon and officer in a Masonic lodge. <laughs> huh? So Freemasonry. Free yeah. Yeah. So Cardinal Deacon, the lowest ranking of three orders in the College of Cardinals in the Roman Catholic Church. So it's the name of uh, certain cities. It's, uh, Isn't that interesting? They got something in common with the Roman Catholics. Then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It's also a, a surname um, and a nickname and fictional correct characters. And uh, you see, this is so widespread, uh, this ambiguation. This is a ministry and also it can refer to uh, astrology. Mm -hmm. Interesting, huh? It's such a broad, uh, such a broad, you so, Sodian deacons. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 not D E A C A N, but it sounds the same. Yeah. Oh, K A N. Yeah, K A N. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is German though. It does. It it doesn't matter. We can switch to English. Ah, really? We can switch to English. Yeah. So this is a deacon. Huh? It's a subdivision of astrological astrological sign. Huh? Aha. Uh -huh. In order to, to give fuller information to the zodiac signs, ancient astrologers subdivided each sign into periods of approximately 10 days. These mm -hmm. divisions are known as the deacons and decantes and are somewhat arbitrary in order to allow for the five and sometimes six extra days in the year beyond the 360 days required for the 36 deacons. Astrologers believe that each of the deacons has his own individual character. In modern times, however, the assignment of deacons has changed considerably. Each sign is allocated a triplicity consisting of three of the four classical elements, air, water, earth, or fire, and is therefore subdivided into three equal parts of 10 degrees each. Yeah? So it comes from decimal, which means December, yeah? from the 10th system, 10 degrees. These parts are referred to as deacons and deaconates. 
you know, I, I have learned it of deaconates. Yeah, but interesting that it sounds a lot like a, a deacon. Each deacon of a sign is assigned rulership by the planet ruling the sign and secondary rulership of the planet ruling the deacon. Aha, aha. That is the actual difference. The article is about the office in, in, in Christ churches. So this deacon is a member of an office in Christian churches. Okay, so much so. Also in Lutheran churches. Uh, so that have not, very much in common. The word deacon is derived from the Greek diakonos, which standard ancient Greek word of a minister in service awaiting men, a minister or a messenger. Um, there's also one woman called Phoebe. It's mentioned in Romans 16.1.2 as a deacon of the church in Kenkreate. Yeah, but uh, if I go to the, uh, this is the explanation of Wikipedia. If I go into the King James Version, it's been said that comment unto you, Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is in Kenkreate. So this is in Romans 61. Next, look it up. Diakonos. Mm -hmm. oh, servant, this is, yes. Yeah, yeah, servant. Yeah, this you see, this is uh, a Christian teacher and pastor. Yeah, it's been called 12G, so Greek 1249. They have uh, not uh, uh, translated it as a deacon. Interesting, huh? But because we just learned that the usual explanation of uh, Greek uh, 1249 um, is servants, yeah? not a deacon. And in the King James Bible, I found that only two, five sessions of deacon where they have translated that word into deacon. The others who were used were used as servants. Yeah? So 30. 30 times they have used servants, six I times understand. they have used deacons. So much for deaconess or, or female deacons. huh? If, I found it interesting. I, I don't know if, uh, if it is a minor thing. Uh, you see that just found that. OK, so these are the deacons. These are the helpers. Yeah, so that some kind of a lower rank priest. Yeah, servant, minister, messenger. So it has not, not described in the King James Bible as a deacon, but as a servant. So please always use the King James Version. Yeah, because this here is debatable, at least. OK. So uh, this is goes on and on and on what the Catholic deacon is. They are just helping the priest. There are some kind of a lower rank priest. They are just helping the priest. These are the deacons. Yeah? But we have deacon without the A in astrology. Uh, yeah. my, 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 my. So this is a deacon, disambiguation. Oh, there are also, also certain explanations about that. This is a diagonal star table from the 11th dynasty, Kofinid, found in Egypt. Oh, Egypt? Oh, it's a later thing than uh, Babylon. But uh, the deacons are 36 group of stars, small constellations used also in the uh, Egypt astronomy. Oh, you have to have long ears and uh, <laughs> now ancient Egyptian astronomy. Yeah. They rose consecutively on the horizon throughout each Earth rotation. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, we will go into that very extensively soon. The rising of each deacon marked the beginning of a new decanal hour, Greek horror. Yeah, we, where comes the horoscope, which means the 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 uh, the view of of of, of the hour. Um, of the night for the ancient Egyptians, and they were used as the sidereal star clock beginning by at least 9th or 10th dynasty. You see, this is not far away from uh, Babylonian. Deacons continue to be used throughout the Renaissance in astrology and in 
look at that magic, but modern astrologers almost entirely ignore them. Yeah. So the deacons are the 33 sixth group of stars in the ancient Egyptian astronomy as well, as we have learned that um, it was also uh, divided in uh, Babylonia. Um, pardon me, so I could have copied that before. Uh, yeah, and there it is. Babylonian constellations dividing 36 into three circles represented by the gods Anu, Elil and Ea. Okay. So I don't want to bother you with all the names of the deacons because there are somebody mentions in, huh? The Testament of Solomon. In Greek Hermetism, which is uh, nothing more or less than uh, that Hermes Trimistigos, uh, so the three, uh, threefold uh, Hermes, uh, was uh, the creator of everything. And it has been said in, uh, in witchcraft, actually in Hermetism, you see the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn in the uh, 19th to 20th century. Everybody in the Hermetism uh, thinks that it is, it's, it's one of the major influence in witchcraft thinks that Hermes was the one who taught Moses into sorcery. I'm not making that up. That's really the thing as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So they really think that Hermes created everything and he was, uh, he was the one with the um, Emerald tables, etc., so that uh, he's he was ordering Moses and not the Almighty God. So, but he educated Moses. Yeah. So uh, you don't you you cannot think of all the things uh, if you are really into the occult and into sorcery. The stuff it gets so weird because you got uh, several things which aren't true and it doesn't hold anything up uh, when you read the Bible. But uh, you see, that's the point. You you have to be they want to confuse you into believing that Hermes existed and that he taught uh, even Moses, which is seen, Moses is seen in, uh, in, in sorcery witchcraft as one of a great uh, sorcerer. Yeah. You see, you got all these certain 36 name of these uh, so-called deacons. So the zodiac is an area of the sky um, of the ecliptic. So that means it's a, it's a, it's around around the Earth. Yeah. So if you would like to think that's a circle around the Earth, so that's that's the zodiac. And uh, this zodiac has been divided in twelve parts of thirty degrees each, so to create a complete circle, and it's been named after fixed stars constellation like Aries, Taurus, Gemini, etc, etc, etc. So that is what you what appears in the uh, in the horoscope on the outer ring here. OK, in the inner ring, you see the divisions by 12 for the different houses where the planets rule. So if Moon is in the sixth house, one, two, three, four, five, six area uh, calculated from that. Yeah, so the moon rolls over house six. But the sixth house um, has uh, more or less uh, usually uh, 30 degrees. And so it has uh, three different deacon rulers, 10, 10, 10. Yeah, so at least the zodiac got uh, 30, 360 divided by 12 means 30 degrees. So this is the first um, division by 10. It's the first ruler, ruler, ruler. You see, you have to remember ruler, somebody who rules like a king. Huh? So these are subdivisions of the zodiac. And these are subdivisions who then are being seen as 36 rulers. OK. 12 by Three, huh? Okay. These are 360 degrees. So this is more uh, more convenient. Yeah, 360 degrees. And you have here separation by 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Yeah, 5, 10, etc., etc. So you have 12 signs around that on that zodiac on that. Uh, Imaginate, imaginated uh, circle around the earth. And now you got these uh, deacon rulers. Yeah, once again, ruler, ruler, ruler. So that means three by 12 means 36, correct? 
OK. Now, in astrology, um, everybody is connected to a god. Yeah? So if these deacons serve the god, these are servants of gods. So these are the rulers. Imagine when uh, there is a god and there are rulers on the earth, for example. So the ruler is uh, um, a, a subdivision of a god, it's more or less. OK, so in tarot, in tarot card also, you got also these, uh, these divisions. Yeah? And in many other things also, the deacons in astrology. And this uh, Benjamin Dykes, PhD in 2004, says the deacons in astrology started out as a calendar devices. There were ways of keeping track on how much of the heavens had turned day to day. Before the Greek invention of horoscopic astrology in the first few centuries before Christ, the Babylonian and Egyptian traditions of stargazing and omens did not focus so exclusively on the zodiac. And now, Brad, uh, who are the two most prominent countries where the Israelites, the faithful followers of God, were in captivity? The two, you said? Yeah. The, the two, yes. Yeah, there you go. Babylonian and Egyptian, yes. What a coincidence, huh? Sure. What a coincidence. No coincidence, Michael. It's just a fact, yeah. Originally, the 30, the Egyptians associated 36 constellations with the calendar. They were also used for calendrical purposes. Each day, for 10 days, the Egyptians would note what stars were rising with the sun. After 10 days, they consider it the start of the new deacon. Oh, but isn't that interesting? So they had uh, 10 days for a week then, didn't yeah. they? Um, no, actually. That's they what have, I heard somewhere. Yeah, it can, can be. I'm not into that. But it has to, to, to sum up to 360. Yeah, so that, that's the sure. first Sure. That's the first thing. Yeah? Yeah. But it's clear that the, it might be as is a pagan uh, religion. But I remember there's somewhere saying that in, in ancient Egypt, they had a 10 day week, not a seven day week. So it kind of threw everything off, you know, as far as the uh, we can we can ask Uncle Roman. <laughs> Each month was divided into three 10-day periods known as deacons or decades. Uh -huh. So you can, you can make it up. Oh, who, Which whom you, one do you whom want you to really believe? believe? Yeah. Uh, internet, in, internet rumor has it. Oh, boy. We have no time to, to go into that because otherwise we will never make it. But, oh, um, tell me about it. Yeah. Yeah, you see well, one. And this is the thing, Michael. You know, if we three don't weeks. Ever ah, you see here, three weeks was one months. Month. You are. It seems to be correct. Yeah, three weeks was one month. So then it then it uh, keeps up. Yeah. Okay. So when Greek scientists and astrologers began to synthesize prior traditions and added systematically innovations of their own, dividing the sky according to the zodiac became more common, and the deaconal system was shifted onto it. The deacons were on represented the power of star deities. We are talking about gods with deities and pictures of the deities associated with them can be found. The Roman astrologer Philmicus Maternus, so three to four century AD, says the deacons have infinite power and freedom in indicating the fates of man. So you see that were one really interesting uh, item to go into that early, um, and and they are um, they are not so powerful than real gods. You see, you have the same hierarchy than priests and deacons a little bit. So that was uh, my intention from the beginning, where I was mentioning deacon with the A as a minister of the church. It is unknown where this division came from, but clearly derived from an earlier Babylonian star worship in attribution of deities to the deacons. Yeah, you see, there are uh, sub deities, you'd like to say, like demigods, yeah, something like that. Okay. <clears throat> Did they believe that celestial spirits, possibly accessible through magical means, were influential through certain parts of the sky? Yeah, then weather prediction, New Dane astrology. There were two versions of rulership given to the deacons in the ancient world. I will call this Chaldean rulership and rulership by triplicity. Yeah, you see that uh, it will turn out to be three times 12 means 36. 
And some of you might now know why I'm keeping the number 36, why I'm mentioning it so often, and we'll go back down to, to that road. Um, we don't have to go into extensively that. Yeah. <clears throat> Zodiac deacons, without A, sure. Yeah. Each sign governs 30 sessions, uh, 30 uh, degrees. So that means three by 12. A little bit more for the people who think that I'm a black and white screen. No, we have color too. When I go in German in Deacon, yeah, it, it, it says uh, the Deacon um, represents a special uh, scholarship in, in a high school. And Deacon or Dechrent from Latin Deacanus comes from Dizem 10. Yeah, you see Dizem like December. Okay, which is it, which was the uh, tenth month. Yeah, and in the Roman Catholic Church, it's uh, it's the head of a group of priests. Aha. You see, if you if you then compare the English with the German Wikipedia, you get uh, some things which are really a little bit of mixed off. Yeah, but uh, I'm 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 just saying that uh, in in German it's been said that uh, a deacon without an A, yeah, uh, comes from ten, which would also be the same as a deacon in astrology, right? I hope you get get my point. I, I cannot help it that it's been written with an A in English, but in German we write it without an A. Okay. You see that in the Bible, the number 666 is much often uh, mentioned, especially in Revelation 13. Yeah, the number of the beast. Okay. And uh, here it is. Revelation. Just, just give me... 50 minutes, Brad, and, and, and we will come to the very conclusion of it. Uh, yeah, there it is. So. So would you like to read, uh, I think, verses 15 to, to 18, Brad? Oh, we start verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Oh, the image of the beast, Michael. So the image of the state. So those who aren't voting. Ah, and causeth all both small. Ex excuse me. I'm sorry for my comments, guys. I, I just, you know, this is gals too. You know, this is a political thing. I hate politics. I'm going to start again. And I'm just not going to comment. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. So that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred threescore and six. Which would be the equivalent of the title of the Pope or the former title of the Pope, which means the uh, representative of the Son of God, the Vicarius Filii Dei. Okay, which means in Roman numerals you would come up with the 112 to in addition to 53 and to add to 501, which comes up to 666. Okay. If ah, we, Michael, if, you just reminded me of something. You know, you said formerly the Pope, and we have the uh, the artist formerly known as Prince. Tough cat, it, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that funny how this Jesuit Pope can claim not to have the title Vicarius Filii Dei, mm -hmm. but yet we have a second former Pope that is alive and well today. They call him, uh, what, Pope Emeritus or whatever, mm -hmm. meaning that he's the retired Pope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have the Jesuit Pope wearing a silver ring and you have the the retired Pope 
wearing a gold ring mm-hmm. to this day, as if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? I haven't I haven't looked it up. You see that uh, I'm I'm just at this moment I'm not. Well, you uh, just look at a picture of of uh, Pope Emeritus uh, Benedict the Sixteenth today, and yeah. uh, you know we'll see. Twenty twenty one maybe. And let's see for images what comes up. There might not be many images of him today. He's in pretty rough shape, I'm sure. Yeah, he's very, he's, 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 um, he's very old. 90, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is the Antichrist we're speaking of here. Mm-hmm. These aren't nice guys. They they appear to be nice. Oh, yes. Whited sheplickers in, in uh, Matthew 23. That's what they yeah. are. But you see that everybody is, is is focusing on the vicarius fidei day because it is the number of a man. It would also be the number of his office. Sure. And I don't say that it's incorrect. But if we go down the path that we discovered that 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 actually uh, Rome is, uh, is 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 a continuation of Babylon, yeah, uh, Babylon the Great. Okay. Then if the science is also a continuation out of Babylon. What would you say um, that we go down that path? Because then Vicarius Filii Dei has to be in some reference of the Babylonian system, which means that in old times in Babylon, Nimrod was the ruler, was the hunter, the mighty hunter of souls, and uh, was also the godman and the sun god. Yeah. And you know that in astrology, the sun is the most uh, prominent and more, most important thing, which, which, which means is that if you worship uh, a horoscope or astrology, you worship uh, the planet as rulers, as gods. Yeah? You, pla- you, you worship the deacons as rulers and the planets as gods. Can we agree on that fact? If so, it was as well in Babylonia and it was in Egypt the case. And 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 we know that uh, the, what the zodiac is, it's it's nothing more than uh, than a circle, a circle around around the earth. And uh, the Pope calls himself the master bridge builder, yeah, between heaven and earth. Yeah, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, how shall I point it out? You see that there is another explanation where the 666 could be derived from, and it doesn't come from me or from some fancy book. Yeah, it just comes from from simply uh, mathematic for math. You, we know that uh, math, astronomy, and astrology were the main branches in Babylonian science, right? If we know that astronomy and astrology are using religious names of pagan deities for their stars as well as for their planets, you see the moon, the Mars, or moon or lunar, Venus, Mars, Sun, Jupiter, Mercury, Saturn, yeah, and we know that uh, uh, Nimrod was the sun god, and that the popes are using the sun symbol on their monstrance as well as many other religion uh, facilities are using them. Yeah, they are then doing that on a Sunday since the, help me operate this council on Laodicea, was it that? Yeah, sounds right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, were, they were punishing those mm-hmm. that would not observe a Sunday Sabbath, rather those who would observe the Jewish Sabbath that were not Jews. Mm-hmm were uh, pun- uh, actually, uh, I-, I don't know if it was punishable by death or not, but it was very severe. Very soon and after the af- after that uh, Roman Catholic uh, uh, system was founded in uh, from uh, Constantine, yeah, a, a few years after that, they changed the Sabbath to Sunday. Yeah, I, I think I think we can agree on that. Yeah, Council of Laodicea. That sounds so. Right. Sun- Sunday means the worship of the sun. Yeah. It is not the second day. So the worship of the sun is the most greatest, biggest, hottest and uh, prominent system. Now, sun, Mercury, uh, Venus, Earth, Mars, 
uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and uh, Pluto has been left out. Yeah. So if you like to see it this way or that way, it doesn't matter. In the old times, there were only seven planets known. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The moon is just no, no, no planet. Um, he's dependent on the Earth uh, in one way or another. And Saturn is the, was the last one. That was, that was why he was depicted with that. And also the Lord of the Rings, when you see the ring around the planet. Yeah, okay. So they have left out this because these, because they were not discovered. And everything has to do with Roman gods here. Everything. Saturn, Venus, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter. Everything. See that the high priest has the high knowledge, so he has also the knowledge of science. And as we now know that uh, I'm not going into that, I'm not going, going to finish the session now by simply mathematics. Why I am using Excel now. You see, we have discovered the following. 666, six, six. okay? Has nothing to do with, um, with, has everything to do, for example, with, uh, okay? Or, future. Yeah, because F is the sixth letter of the alphabet, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I just draw a table here. We have seen that Rome is the continuation of Babylon. We know that in ancient Babylon, science was mathematics, astronomy, and astrology. And so astronomy and astrology has to use the mathematics. These are the 36 rulers of the zodiac. <clears throat> All 36 of them. And what does it, what, what outcome is? If I add up all the rulers of the zodiac to get the entire circle around the earth, to have a pagan religion system, which adds up to be the sun worship, because the sun, the heliocentric system is the pagan belief system, actually. The heliocentric system is the sure. system, system where, where the sun is the ruler of it all, as you see it in the monstrance. It's not of my own research. I have uh, picked it up uh, from a video uh, from a guy which is, uh, in, in, in my esteem, is, is a very clever guy, um, but uh, he, he, he doesn't live uh, anymore. Maybe he was killed. Um, he was um, a seven-day Adventist. His name is James Arabito. And he came up with uh, some lectures about Babylonian science. And he said that uh, the summation of all these uh, deacons seen as rulers around the earth, which then comes up to, be, to, to serve the lord of the zodiac, which would be a pagan religion, is the sum of all the 36 deacons is summing up to 666. You can make up your own mind if that is correct, but if Rome is the continuation of Babylon, uh, then it is a very strange coincidence that also the Vicarius Filii Dei means 666. We know it's the number of a man, but his origin actually is from Babylon. And that means the worship of images and idols and the worship of planets, the worship of the stars and uh, the ruler of the zodiac or the ruler of the circle around the earth, which could be also seen as a ring around the earth, the lord of the ring, the lord of the zodiac, still is being handed over of, uh, to, to Satan because it's a pagan uh, system. And so all the numbers of each ruler, 1 to 36, comes up with the result of also 666. It's just the adding in the number 1 to the number 36. It's nothing more. Nothing. Really, Michael? Yeah, sure. Wow. I've listened to, to so many uh, things uh, of, of all the channels I'm listening to, and never an, anybody mentioned that. Wow, that's really fascinating.
And that's why I in, in, insisted so on these deacons, you see. That was mm -hmm. that was the main reason why I said that, oh my, 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 if this all is a pagan system, um, then they are worshipping uh, the sun system. They are not worshipping a creator, but the creation. Yeah, sure, and they are it's, worshipping... It's all about the pantheon, man. Yeah. And they are worshipping Satan. And what does Satan do? Satan is depicted as the Lord of the Rings, as, as Saturn. And also he's depicted as, uh, yeah, as having the power on Earth. There is a famous song. Uh, from uh, yeah, from the fifth dimension, age of Aquarius. Yeah. When the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter aligns with Mars, then peace will guide the planets and love will steer the stars. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. The age of Aquarius. Aquarius is the eleventh sign of the zodiac, which means this is the age of the rulership of pagan belief systems. With the sunshine in. Yeah, the sun. It all comes together that all the pagan belief systems are have a first priority, and uh, the Bible believing Christians they're just a minority and they are the lunatics or something like that. Yeah. Sunshine. Yeah. That's the life on this planet. No more life uh, without the sun. Uh, but the Bible speaks of that the light was there on this earth before the sun had even been created. But yeah, well, who are we to doubt all this uh, worldly science? Huh? Who are we? Who are we against this mighty, mighty institutions with lots of money promoting sun worship and promoting planets as gods and being the bridge builder and uh, yeah, and uh, deacons and all these uh, these other pagan uh, belief systems that really really nothing else happens and nothing has changed we are getting back to babylon actually we are getting back to babylon yeah all these tarot cards all these uh, astrology all these deacons yeah all these things were were being uh, used in uh, both babylon and egypt Babylon and Egypt, the two cities or the two kingdoms, actually, where the true believers of Christ were being held in captivity. Yeah, So they really could see what they are worshipping there. Yeah? Cannot Im imagine how, how deep everything is connected, but uh, I hope that the, the last two sessions gave a little bit of more insight how anything is interwoven into the church. I'm going back into the script that you really see how much we have covered in that uh, in that session here. We have started with deacons, and in German, the deacon is without an A. So deacon means deacon in German. So that is the same name. Um, if I would uh, look at a Roman Catholic priest or a priest, a uh, minor priest, or if I would look in the uh, dividing by 10 in each house of the zodi of the uh, of the horoscope. <laughs> yeah, and you see here the god, the false god of, of uh, Mars uh, ruling on the first house in the horoscope of someone. Any questions? You can make up your own mind. You can go into extensive research about that. We cannot do that because otherwise uh, we, we would have hundreds of things. We, you see that to, to make the connections between religion, science, politics, and uh, ancient histories, uh, you need to study many years and then you come up to the conclusion and say that, wow, really? Is that really the case? And that's why I was doing the script to really let you, let you see how many things are interwoven, how many things are related and that everything comes out of the system of Babylon, comes out of the system of Nimrod, comes out of the system who are being thrown out of the paradise of the Garden of Eden and out of the system of Cain and out of the system of uh, the son of Noah, of Ham and something like that. You see that this is the system of the people who are ruling this earth yeah, this earth, they are ruling this earth because they have the power, they are in the majority and they have all the money they will get and therefore they will educate 
our children, they would educate ourselves, they are using media, they are using massive delusion and uh, most of the people think that because the majority of people are using that uh, so-called science, science so-called, uh, this is correct and you see that everything goes back to Babylon. Yeah, everything goes back to Babylon. All roads lead to Rome, but Rome leads back to Babylon. So that's my conclusion for this. And in the next session, we will go into more extensive research. This was the session 16, Babylon the third, the rulers of the zodiac and the ruler of this world, which is the so-called God of this world, which is Satan. Many thanks for your concentration and uh, thank you very much also for the cooperation with my beloved brother Brett. Handing it over, wishing you that uh, God may bless you and Maranatha. Yes, Michael, it's uh, rather interesting how, you know, these, uh, these successors to the throne of so-called Peter are uh, conducting their business and uh yeah sure enough i sent you a bbc news article here uh benedict 16 uh 10 things about the pope's retirement and in this article item number four says his ring according to tradition the papal apartments are sealed with the pope's gold ring known as the fisherman's ring he is smashed with uh what was it a silver hammer when the pope leaves office quote objects strictly tied to the ministry of saint peter must be destroyed unquote the vatican says yes this time around though the insignia on benedict 16th's ring was merely scratched with a cross so that it can be kept for posterity perhaps in a museum. Okay, so maybe he doesn't wear the ring anymore, according to this article, but uh, who knows? It just seems awfully fishy to me, <laughs> Michael. But that's the subject for another time. And I hope everyone is doing well, and uh, we'll catch up with you next time on the next session of science the new religion catch up with you then god bless and maranatha